All right, so we're going through the uh, like modified north-south Kimura here, and your grip will actually change about halfway through. So when I decide I'm going to do this, I don't want to get up. See how I've just got like my elbow and wrist controlling his arm? I actually want to get my chest over the top of the arm here to apply a good Kimura in this case. All right, so I'll show you where we're going with it first, and then you can then you can get the details a bit more. So I'm going to be locking down here, turning, and I'm going to get my chest over the top of that arm. Okay, like this. Now I'm dropping my elbow down, and I'll go nice and gently, but I can apply a good rotational finish for the shoulder lock. So we can rotate our shoulder inwards, right? And you, can, you know, I'm not particularly flexible in my shoulders, but I can get my hand behind my back, as you can see. All right, so I can get it to here. Some people can go a lot further than that, which is fine. But actually, it's not just a shoulder, like your shoulder joint is actually from your scapula and your arm bone, right? And it's not just your shoulder doing that movement. A lot of it actually comes from your scapular thoracic joint or your shoulder girdle, which is basically like your shoulder blade on your rib cage. If you watch this, my shoulder can tilt forward like this. This is nothing to do with my actual glenohumeral joint, right? This is like just my, my shoulder tilting forward like this. And I get good range, like a decent amount of the, the rotational range comes from that, right? If that's blocked, so if I not, and you can test this yourself, if I don't move my shoulder, you put my hand on the front of your shoulder, you can't move your scapular thoracic joint forward. If I block that, my internal rotation stops about here. Okay. And we're going to use that now, like we're basically going to, we're completely locking the scapular thoracic joint so that we have to move less into rotation of the shoulder to get the finish. In this case, we're stopping there. You're basically trying to stop their shoulder being able to roll forward in this Kimura, which is important because we don't have, we're kind of getting up in a funny position where we don't have an extreme amount of range to take their hand like really far behind their back. So when we, when we get up from the Kimura here, I'm trying to bring my chest over the arm and over the, sh the shoulder as well, like this. Okay. And you see it's like dropped his shoulder down. Okay. And so you got, look at this, I've just got his elbow where it is. I reckon I can make Jake tap pretty much as he's tapping before his wrist even hits the ground here. Okay. And of course, if I took that pressure off the shoulder, no problem. Okay. So I'll actually, yeah, and, and I get a little bit extra range by like lifting his elbow up a tad. We don't want to go, you know, if you overemphasize that, you often start to lose some control. But by sagging my weight on his actual shoulder and keeping his elbow elevated, I'm making sure that scapula can't move and his range of motion to finish is very different. Okay. Again, I'll, now I've got it like locked in. If I take pressure off, the amount I would have to twist, and like especially when you can sit up, is dramatically more. Okay. And it's really hard, you can see I'm losing like my, my sprawl and my position. Like I could, I could lose the grip if I had to do all that. So, so when you get up from here, you keep it tight like normal, your elbow's tight at first. Kind of when your feet are in position, when I've just turned my hip, this is where I pull down and I get my chest over the top. I want his elbow on my elbow and my weight should kind of sag that, making that pressure even more. I want to put my elbow down onto the ground still, but the good curve, make sure he can't straighten out of this. Okay. I can take my left leg up if need be, and I just start to lean in to finish this shoulder lock. Now it's really important you track their head with this one, because if his head moves away from me, He's starting to free the elbow. So if he's moving like that, I'm walking my hips back into his head as I apply the finish. Okay, just don't, you know, if you go too much, you start letting their shoulder lift up. We don't want that. We still want their shoulder flattened, okay, but just tracking the head. So I can, because my feet are situated like this, I can actually move my hips back into him. So again, for our modified Kimura, we get good positioning. I'm quite, like my chest is quite far out to the side already here, open out on the elbow, okay, arm a little bit deep, walk, 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 turn your hips, chest over the arm, get your elbow to the inside, doesn't have to be flared, it's probably actually better if it's, if it's tight here like this, drive into their head a little bit, 
lift the elbow up and push the, the wrist down. Okay. A, lot, a lot of it's actually not about pushing the wrist behind, but, but kind of pinning the wrist and lifting the elbow up without the shoulder following. 